So the Honda has um, so far arrested um, more than 8,000 uh, people, civilians across the whole nation, and they have killed 1,100 um, civilian and M civilian on the streets. Um, after the defense war, we are seeing more soldiers and police defending the, their outposts and joining in the movement. The junta has increased the attack on the civilians, especially in the, in the middle part of Myanmar and in ethnic areas. They used airstrikes and they raided in different villages. They bent down houses and killed everyone and sort of that's there's a kind of uh, crimes against humanity. We have more than 100 um, ethnic groups, ethnic arms group inside the country, and we have more than um, like 30, around 30. 31 uh, biggest arms army in, inside the country in different areas. They have their own territory. So when the NUG um, built their, their, their uh, people's defense force, they are basically building their own army, um, not joined by any uh, ethnic army because the ethnic army, they have their own demands. They don't want to intrude or or like take over other different lands. They are just defending their own lands since they're independent. And after 2010, the first ever election in Myanmar, then afterwards, the, the, we have like kind of um, limited freedom where we can organize for unions. It was the late, it was the Leavers Union who launched that launch a uh, big strikes in Yango, the biggest mm -hmm. city. So, like a thousand of workers, most of them are women, and that inspired a lot. And that set the mass strikes in uh, you know afterwards. So they are the big, big backbone, and they are the ones who stood up against the Honda. They show us the way. In Myanmar, there's a big taboo that, you know, women's product, women's clothes are dirty. Like now women are breaking that, that ceiling that, you no, know, our we are using our saroon as our protection, as our power case. And that movement um, gave a lot of encouragement to the 50%, more than 50% of the population in the country which are, who are women. Um, now women have their own strike committee, so they are leading different strikes almost every day on the ground. After four years long of their struggle, you know, that the Rohingya genocide, as we call it, it's been four years that none of the perpetrators being held accountable yet. Um, the Rohingya genocide was like a war hit news, right? It was was on the headlines but what happened after four years what happened nothing that the Rohingya still remain stateless the Rohingya still remain in the refugee camps and their suffering continues that the international accountability and justice system is failing to the Rohingya population and, you know the Rohingya is is like um worse of course like 10 times worse than what they are doing right now in the big city but still they are feeling killing using snipers they're using airstrike, they're using, you know, big weapons to, to um, oppress the majority people and um, the civilians. But none of the, none of the international actor could stop the military from using violence. They just demand and release statements and talk and talk about what happened next. The people, they got killed. My friends, they got arrested. My country is basically um, a cemetery now. Ethnic minorities, they have been fighting against the same general, same institution for the past seven decades. 
um, now they are joined by many younger people and the majority Burmese people. Now we are trying to take down the military. And so the NUG is a, is a part of the leadership. They are not the main one, as I say, because the farmers, workers, the students, the movement leaders, they are the main backbone of the whole. If NUG is not doing a good job, then they could be taken down too. But what we are seeing is they are they are cool attempt is not yet successful because it was still attempt attempt because we don't submit to them and the the resistance is still going really strong. Basically, they like in the administration they can build their, their own administration. They can uh, give orders to the communities to the villages, to the township, because the people are resisting and re revolving against them. The pillars that support them to fuel, to fuel their actions, right? So that include the financial institution and the in investment that work closely with their, their, their institution and, you know, um, Basically, the international investment corporations that work with them. So indirectly or directly, they are benefiting the crimes in, inside the country. So we are trying to cut their, we're trying to push the international community to put a, um, to impose targeted sanctions on those businesses, military affiliated businesses. And we are asking them to stop working or paying tax tax to these institutions so that they stop they stop functioning. The economy in Myanmar basically is going down. The Honda is still announcing that they were um, they they are ruling the country and they will make sure um, they are capable of ruling the country. And that's what the resistance force are trying to make sure they fail at it. You know. And the the the, the labor's union, they are calling for comprehensive sanctions. That will impact them a lot, you know. They will lose their jobs and so on. But the labor's union, they say, we don't care at one point. So that's how the economy is collapsing. And it's, it's intentional because the resistance force and the people inside the Myanmar are trying to make sure that they can control. We're trying to prove that the Honda is not capable of ruling the country. The Honda is being supported by Russia and China, basically, and they are other different countries who are selling weapons to them. So we are trying to stop them. In Myanmar, the general public say UN is united nothing. You know, in the first few weeks after the coup attempt, like people are just sitting in front of the UN building and UN institution building, and they don't even get out to explain what is going on. We are so worried that your institution might work with the Honda in under the name of humanitarians, under the name of you know relief program and so on. Then they would just sign contract with the Honda in a way of giving legitimacy to the Honda as a government body. That's that's how people lose hope with the with the UN or whatever the international mechanism. That's why you can see the defensive war has been declared because of it because of the international community failed to the peoples in Myanmar. We are in solidarity with the peoples around the world who are oppressed, who are being marginalized, who are vulnerable um, in different co community, like in Afghanistan or in Argentina. We will, uh, we will be super careful with the government, but with the people, we are always standing in solidarity and we share the struggle. Mm -hmm.